Okay, it is camera time. Camera time. And here we are. This is the Canon EOS Rebel SL3. Okay. And this is my first DSL. From what I understand and the research that I've done, as you can see, I have two lenses in the background. I'll be talking about those in a little bit. But um, it looks like DSL is actually kind of on its way out. Mirrorless is uh, gaining popularity. And uh, <laughs> I'm not going to try to really like give you any kind of breakdown about camera specifics because I am a newbie in this space. But uh, I do know that the reason why they call it DSL has to do with there actually being a mirror inside the camera and every time you push the shutter you know it the mechanism inside moves uh, hence why it's competition nowadays is called the mirrorless which is all basically done electronically so this is kind of like a little bit old school but the reason why I got it is because it's still, well, first of all, it's still really widely used. And maybe people that are photographers will leave comments like, you know, it's a debate. Okay, so not saying that this is old yet, but maybe five years from now, I think it looks like the trend is going in the direction that everything is mirrorless. However, I personally feel like for the money that I was willing to spend, I spent about $1,000 on this camera and this lens this lens came with the camera okay so um i don't know how that breaks down i guess the the camera was like 600 and then the other lens was 400 something like that but i felt like i would get the best quality uh for the price buying a dsl um, and if i wanted to get the same quality at this point um and go the mirrorless route i'd have to spend a little bit more now, in hindsight, you know, the, the lenses, the way that the lenses connect to the camera, like these DSL lenses will connect to the, this DSL. You can't connect this DSL lens to a mirrorless camera um, unless you buy an adapter. And I don't know if there's a loss of quality with the adapters. So that's kind of like one of the weird things about this changeover is a lot of photographers that have been in the game for a long time with a DSL have a huge variety of different lenses that they shoot with and as they transition over to mirrorless uh, camera bodies their lenses are no longer compatible unless they get like I just said the adapter and, and you know every adapter claims that the quality is not lost but who knows really you know um, and also and like I said, I'm not like a super professional photographer here, but the technology is so good at this point. It's like, man, um, you're really splitting hairs. So I don't know. That's just my thoughts about it at the moment. But I think that this is a good camera for anyone who's looking to start out uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'll tell you what was important to me. Um, first of all, I wanted it to shoot real estate which is why I got a special lens. And um, I wanted it, the pictures to look as good as possible, but I also wanted to be able to use this for video as well. Now, um, I've had this for a couple months and I've used it. Let me see, can I do this with one hand? There you go. Um, I wanted to use it with video and have this screen be able to swivel. Let me turn it on so that you can really see what's going on. So there it is, kind of shut. And on the back side is an actual LCD screen. Now, in case you have this on a tripod and you're videotaping yourself, um, it's nice to be able look at that. Yes, now you can see yourself when you're talking into the camera so you know if you're in the shot or not. So that was an important feature that I wanted that this camera has. Um, pretty cool. And it also goes back. And now you have an LCD on the back. It is touchscreen. And 
I'm not going to talk about all the settings. There's actually a lot of great tutorials online about how to work this camera if you're interested uh, in it. But I just kind of wanted to tell you about why I bought it and what my opinion of is of it. So, like I said, I wanted to be able to see myself from the front and uh, that's an option that it has. I also wanted it to be able to shoot 4K video. Now, in my opinion, <laughs> the 4K video on this camera, although it is an option, it's not very good. Um, I'm sad to say, but that's what you get for $600 um, when this is primarily meant to be to shoot pictures and then they kind of just throw on the video version and oh yeah, it's in 4K, but it's choppy. It's choppy. If your subject is moving or if you're moving the camera and you're kind of like, you know, it's, it's going to be jagged. Um, even with the the smoothing, there's like a, a smoothing option. It wasn't smooth. It's not smooth. And it also crops, meaning that when you're, when you're in 4K, I don't know if I can even demonstrate this, but okay, so... Oh, and I don't have a lens on. I've never actually tried to do it without the lens. Here, let me... This is the lens. This is a 10 millimeter lens. I don't want to talk about the lens yet, but... Um, so that's the shot. It's pretty wide. As you can see. And as soon as you go to movie mode... Well, you can't really see, but it actually... And actually, the reason why is because I don't have it in 4K. Because I don't actually want to shoot in 4K because it's I don't like, I actually think that shooting in 1080 is a better result than shooting in 4K on this camera. So, it, you know, in hindsight, you know, I wanted to get a camera that would have 4K, but it's not good enough. So kind of um, a waste of money if you're, if you're really it what the the 4K was kind of like okay I'm gonna spend money on a camera it might as well be um, I might as well just spend the extra money and make sure that it's a 4K camera and you know come to find out that just because it says on the box that it's 4K doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be a 4K that's smooth and doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be a 4K that is. Uh, gives you a like a large circumference of viewing space if that if you understand what i mean like it's just it's very narrow like it, you don't you don't have a lot of peripheral vision on the 4k mode you're not seeing that the, the outside it's just very focused and close and up in your face makes everything look small if you're trying to get you know uh, a landscape um view of a particular place uh, maybe it's good if you're just trying to focus on one person podcast style, but it um, it definitely puts the view up in your face. Um, but the picture quality is uh, is really good. It's it functions at 24 megapixels, and uh, I shoot RAW and also JPEGs. There's uh, there's an option inside here where you can do both at the same time, and. And the other thing that's nice about it, especially as being a beginner, is that it's the it's not like overly complex. Yeah, there's a lot of buttons. This is, um, I think it's it's considered a professional camera. Like you can you can get some really nice shots with this, but it's like kind of entry level professional, if that makes any sense. Um, which basically means that as you go into the navigation. And you, you know, you're setting up all these things and you get out of these presets and you go actually into manual mode. Um, and you start digging through the menu. There's, there's a lot of options if you're just starting out, but compared to some of the other cameras, this is like a great place to start. It is laid out um, very well. Like I said, it's touch screen, so it's easy to navigate. Uh, every option is pretty self-explanatory. And thanks to YouTube, I mean, there's tons of people that are really breaking down every single, you know, option of this. Shout out to Frono's photo. Um, I've learned a lot from that guy. Um, I love his content. And, you know, he's not the only one. There's a lot of people 
that are talking about this stuff. So um, go over there and, and check it out if you really want to learn how to use this camera. But, you know, for someone who's a beginner, I think this is a great place to start. So that's basically all that I want to say about the body. It does come with a flash, um, you know, from what I've read and heard people say on different YouTube videos, it's a shitty flash. So you're not going to want to use it. If you really do want to have um, a flash or you need a flash, there's this uh, little uh, place where you can buy an external flash that's of better quality. And then it just kind of clips right onto that. Um, and I am excited because I actually just ordered one. Um, so looking forward to that. Maybe I'll do a review of that when it comes in as well. But yeah, that's it for the body style. Let's talk about the lenses on the next video. If you liked this, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys on the next video.